So welcome, uh, welcome to lecture two of MCS 471, Introduction to Industrial Math and Computation. Uh, so welcome if you also just joined this course. Um, this first week is devoted to statistical reasoning. So we introduced last time uh, for very useful and very common uh, distributions. Uh, so the topic of today is Takuchi quality control. So we will define what is quality and uh, what is the result of losing quality. So there will be a quality loss function and we have an expected loss of quality. Um, I should say that uh, part of this course is also to illustrate that at this point in time we know already a very very lot of useful mathematics. Uh, so I will introduce Takuchi quality control with a Taylor series. Um, so the first part of this lecture consists mainly of definitions and concepts. In the second part, uh, we will see how to improve quality. So how, what are the factors that determine quality and how can we set up uh, the experiments to figure out where we should devote our attention to. All right, uh, so what is quality? So if you think about this, um, we, it may be easier to think about what it is not. And indeed, uh, let's start uh, with this. Um, so first and foremost, quality is not quantity. Um, and I grew up outside the United States, and if you come to the United States, then you realize that everything is bigger here. Um, so, uh, quantity matters indeed, uh, but it's not quality. Um, so, we are, so quality is often defined by culture. In some societies, like United States is much more diverse, so there is a much larger tolerance for variation in product quality. This is not the case in other societies um, where uh, one strives to uh, realize that the, 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 the variation is actually not always a good thing. Um, so quality is not quantity. Um, the other issue is that uh, quality is not value. Um, so an object can have um, a great value, but uh, certainly for personal, um, if you so if you have a car, for example, uh, your car to a dealer may be worth only a couple of hundred dollars, but to you, your car also represents all the memories of all the places that you have visited and also the the passengers that were in that car. So that car can have a tremendous value to you, but it has no quality anymore. Um, so what is quality then? So uh, an article of good quality performs its intended functions without variability. And here I pause a little bit because the without variability is underlined and in red. So the other aspect is that it causes little loss without uh, true harmful side effects, including the costs of using it. So variability is the key point here. Uh, we will also talk about loss, uh, but then uh, what is loss of quality? How do we get uh, a loss of a quality? Okay. Um, Let's think about this a little bit. Um, so 
what is critical and as we will illustrate as well is that uh, if you do not take variability into account uh, then it is okay if your production just is within the tolerances um, but uh, one so but in the Kochi quality control also in improving quality we will strive to reduce the variability so we will see that there is a cost for variance um, uh, we want to reduce loss um, but the loss that we actually care about in the loss reduction is actually the loss caused by the variability in the product um, so there are harmful side effects uh, liquor is a good example so if you check a bottle of alcohol then it will always invariably list uh, the percentage of alcohol amount and you could actually say that that is uh, indeed the first quality factor um, because i mean there is also uh, alcohol there are alcohol without alcohol but then it's not called alcohol anymore so we consider actually the loss caused by harmful side effects fine this was a definition so this is actually the third point uh, how do we model this how do we quantify this and for this I will illustrate, I will introduce uh, the quality loss function with an example. So at this point in time we have a definition, but how do we work with that definition? Consider, consider the production of shirts and uh, the measurements of the shirt, the key measurement is the neck size um, so if, you've, if it doesn't fit at the neck then uh, there is a problem so we have two uh, we, we have an input if you like uh, the neck size of the customer so it's called M and then Y is uh, the size of the shirt uh, so that's the output of our production now what actually we want is that the Y equals the M uh, but ideally that's always the case but uh, we do not live in a perfect world um, so that's also the notice of the industrial in front of the mathematics and computation so we may have shirts that are too small and that when that happens we have to return or discard the item so there is a loss uh, there there is also a loss if the shirt is too wide um, in, in in that sense uh, the loss may be different because we can tailor um, and speaking of tailors we as mathematicians we have our tailor um, we can think about the tailor expansion uh, we have our input m the neck size of the buyer and we have the produced uh, the neck size of the shirt uh, the Y and we develop then our loss function what that is is not just clear but we have a Taylor expansion so also we use Taylor a lot in MCS 471 in numerical analysis where Taylor was always very good at giving an expansion so in reality, uh, the capital L may be something completely uh, complicated and uh, even not possible to know what is the loss. But we will approximate um, the quality loss function by a Taylor expansion. So the L of Y is already uh, essentially the Taylor expansion where we will stop after the quadratic term so we have a mathematical model a quadratic now it turns out that this quadratic can be simplified more so here is our Taylor expansion again we will lose the higher order terms immediately as we usually do now uh, consider 
that uh, the first term, the constant, is actually zero because there is no loss in the ideal case when y equals m. Great. Uh, there is a second optimization, and here uh, think about m many uh, real-world problems are actually optimization problems. So in the ideal case, uh, we actually have a minimal loss. So if we look at the shape of our quality loss function, at the minimum, the tangent line should be horizontal. Um, so we do some calculus here. If you ever uh, looked for optimal points, then you looked for roots of the derivative. So here actually we know that the second term in our Taylor series also has to be zero, because this is where we are in the ideal situation when the produced shirt matches the neck size of the buyer. So we have a workable model. We have essentially a parabola. A parabola that is shifted with this factor y minus m. Um, and there is some constant there. Uh, so that will be called the loss coefficient. Um, so we, we have a model to represent the loss of quality. The loss that is caused by missing the target. The target is the neck size of the buyer. And we will determine k by interpolation. Uh, if you took MCS 471 or are currently taking it, then interpolation plays an important role there. But we will see that uh, the loss coefficient is essentially always a ratio um, in this uh, situation here. All right, let's continue our example. Um, we have uh, costs uh, that are happening when the shirt is too small. Um, so there is a tolerance here, half a centimeter. Um, so this is still January, and I hope we still haven't um, have our good intentions, our New Year's resolution to lose weight. So half a centimeter, well, we can live with that. Uh, but if the shirt is... Uh, really too small we're not going to lose that much weight so we're going to reject it uh, so there is a cost of rejection there and here it is 40 dollars uh, the other situation where we deviate from the target is when uh, the shirt is too wide well we don't actually mind loose sitting uh, shirts but we also don't really want to look uh, kind of clownish in our clothes uh, that we are swimming in our clothes. So uh, when the when the shirt uh, deviates more than one centimeter, we're also going to uh, complain. Uh, but now actually we can tailor it. Uh, assume that uh, the store has the policy that if it is too white, uh, we will um, adjust it. So there are different costs uh, of tailoring and uh, rejection. So actually to, to, to make this model um, a little bit more interesting, uh, we actually have a piecewise quadratic quality loss function. So because there are different um, tolerances at the right and at the left, and there are also different costs associated to deviating from the target. Okay, so we have numbers. Uh, what we don't yet have are values for the loss coefficient. Um, so let's see how we compute them now. So we have the delta M minus and the delta M plus. Uh, so on this slide, I uh, wrote down the formal definitions, although we have uh, half a centimeter and one centimeter. And with this data, um, we have uh, essentially the interpolation is 
big world, uh, we have only one data point. Uh, so uh, actually we have two data points, but one data point in each direction. Um, so um, this is quickly solved, uh, especially since the numbers are working so well. So when the shirt is too wide, we have one centimeter as uh, the deviation tolerance and 20 as the rejection cost. So actually we divide the rejection cost $20 by one, actually by one squared. So you see that the loss coefficient is a ratio. It's the ratio of the uh, cost over the square of the deviation size. Uh, in the same fashion, so the fact that this example is good is piecewise quadratic, it allows me to say everything twice. So we do the same computation for the loss coefficient when the shirt is too wide. I'm sorry, when the shirt is now too small. So the K minus. So the K minus corresponds to the delta m minus and the delta m minus is one centimeter um, so there we have essentially uh, the half a centimeter uh, where we divide or we multiply we divide by 0.5 to the power 2 which is 0.25 or one fourth so we multiply by four. So the negative cost coefficient is 160. Okay, so on top we have our piecewise quadratic function, but in practice, uh, in practice it looks now a little bit more complicated. So we have four cases. Uh, so we have the cases where we will reject it, so we will reject the shirt when it is uh, too wide. So that's the first line. When it, the shirt is too wide, more than one centimeter. So here I pick the numerical value for the next size. Uh, then we will reject it. Um, then we have the piecewise quadratic. So in between 40 and 41, we have a too wide um, shirt, but we can live with it. Um, and then the third line in the definition here, we have the case when the shirt is too small, but especially since this is January and we have our news resolution that we're all going to lose weight, so we can still live with this. We are optimistic. Uh, but then when the uh, shirt size is really less than or equal to 39.5, we are going to reject it, we're going to return it or discard it, and that has a rejection cost of 40. Um, we are using Julia, preferably in this course. Uh, so uh, last time we had an illustration of a loop. Uh, today we are having a function with a nested if else if else case. Um, so here you see the translation of the formula. So we have the piecewise linear, uh, uh, piecewise quadratic. Um, although there is a constant term to this piecewise constant, piecewise quadratic, piecewise constant. Um, so this function illustrates the Julia realization of the mathematical definition. Okay, uh, why did I do this? Uh, so we have the Julia code, the Julia programming language, and we have the Jupyter Notebook. Um, so if you're not familiar with the, Julia, with, the, with the Jupyter Notebook yet, now is a good opportunity to uh, look at the code that is inside the Jup 
Python notebook. So primarily, uh, we will use the Jupyter notebook for visualization. And here is the quality loss function. Uh, so in the posted Jupyter notebook is the definition of uh, this function and also the plotting instructions. So this slide summarizes the notion of the quality loss function. Um, what is uh, different, uh, what was the novelty of the Takuchi quality control approach is that prior to Takuchi, this would have been, a the quadratic pieces would have been missing. Uh, people would have said that between 39.5 and 41, there was no loss. Um, so with the Takuchi quality control, we kind of uh, have a more interesting shape um, justified by the Taylor expansion and also the uh, rejection costs on both sides. So in red, the bottom line of the slide, uh, we have that missing the target uh, also causes a loss. So there's not a sudden jump uh, from no loss to either $40 or $20, but there is uh, um, a gradual loss of quality. Okay, so the quality loss function is an important concept. Um, how do we tie this to statistics? So we have a random variable uh, that models our production. So our X will, in the example of the shirt, it will each time produce a Y value. Um, so the theta, the target value for the production, in our example, was the next size of the buyer. Then we have our quality loss function expressed as a function of the random variable. Um, so a function of a random variable is essentially also a random variable. Um, so our quality loss function, and here you see that this is a, a mathematical model, and the, the power of mathematics is always that we can simplify. Uh, so with the uh, if you really want to be sticky here, uh, you could say, wait a second, uh, our uh, quality loss function was a piecewise function, typically consisting of four parts. But for simplicity here, we take a quality loss function to be a quadratic. Um, a quadratic um, random variable, um, depending on the target, which is typically the input, what you desire of the production, and then there is the uh, loss coefficient, uh, determined by the acceptance tolerances, um, when, uh, what is the deviation that you tolerate, and also what is the associated cost of deviating from the tolerance, uh, from the target. So the, uh, in the first week of this course, we uh, introduced statistical reasoning. So whenever we have a random variable, we have a probability distribution function. By default, we can always assume that uh, this will be a normal distribution. Although what we actually mainly need are the main two characteristics of any probability distribution, and that is the mean, also called the expected value, and then the standard deviation. So there is a mean and uh, a standard deviation associated to the production, but then we also we want to know what is the mean and the standard deviation of the loss function. So that is what we are going to determine next. So let's do some calculus. Um, so this slide looks uh, at first very intimidating, but we are simply applying some basic properties of integrals. Um, 
So the definition of expected uh, loss um, is the integral uh, with respect to the cumulative distribution function. Um, so the d of fx is actually the d of the capital X. And we have substituted the definition of the quality loss function there. Um, we rewrite this a little bit. So ultimately, uh, I want to get the mu, uh, the mean of the production in there. I want an expression. I want to express the expected loss of quality in terms of the main characteristics of the production. So the mu is inserted. And then we apply, we expand, uh, so we get actually a more complicated formula by expanding the square, um, not fully expanding. Uh, we have the x minus mu factor. The mu minus theta is a constant independent of x, so we see that, that mu minus theta gets uh, moved out here. Um, and then we have the um, sigma that will come in at some point as well. Um, so we have the x times uh, d capital X here, or df of x here. And so uh, these formulations look very intimidating if we are not really that uh, up to date on the definitions by the integrals of the expected values. Um, don't worry about integrals on Friday in Monte Carlo simulation. We will see that there is a very general way of evaluating or estimating any integral um, with Monte Carlo uh, methods. Um, so for the purpose of uh, this derivation here, here now I should probably have started uh, with this middle line here. So the center of the slide uh, summarizes the properties of uh, the um, cumulative distribution. So in, in, in a proper mathematics course, you would start with all the axioms, uh, the definitions, uh, the lemmas, the big theorems, and then the main properties. So in a proper mathematics course, I would have given you these definitions last time. But here in a problem-driven course, we use the math as we need it. Um, so now we were stuck with some very complicated expression. Uh, but it turns out that if we look up our formulas, we see that these expressions uh, simplify. Simplify by the definition. Uh, so perhaps read from right to left here. So the integral of the cumulative uh, distribution function is 1. x times that uh, integral is the mu. And then x minus mu to the power square is the standard deviation. So very conveniently, all the... Uh, long integrals, symbols that we have here, simplify with the key variables of the production. Namely, the mu, the mean, and you see, now it's kind of very interesting. Again, we have a mu minus mu factor. So uh, the quadratic terms, the pure quadratic terms remain. So we have our expected loss. Uh, we have the loss uh, caused by missing the target. So if you miss the target, yes, uh, there is always a loss. But uh, the new thing about Takuchi quality control, the novelty by this approach, is that there is a loss due to variability. So And that depends on the loss coefficient, the k, which is a positive number, and also the sigma square is a positive number. Um, and we can see that it, it will work out. The larger the sigma square, the, la the more variation in our production. We, we, we missed 
the target. Uh, perhaps we do not miss the target that much, but uh, our variation might be too, 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 too wide. And then a larger variation will incur a larger, uh, larger expected loss. Okay, so uh, because this is important and also actually because this is a mathematics course, uh, we mathematicians, uh, we very much care about uh, definitions. So we have the notion of um, quality loss function and now I see that the quality loss function is a quadratic. So in my haste, so there is a bug on this slide, I will fix this. Um, so there is a square missing. Um, so we have the uh, loss function, uh, or what are the terms in the loss function? Three terms, the loss coefficient, uh, the target value, so two constants, and then a random variable uh, for which what we actually care about is the mean value of the production and the standard deviation. So you see how useful this is. Uh, there are many ways how a production can be modeled, but uh, what we actually care about in figuring out the dollar amount, what will be uh, the expected loss, will actually be uh, the mean, how much the mean deviates from the target, and the standard deviation, how much deviation there is. Okay, so... The definition let's look at an example now um, so here is an example which I copied from a reference which I will cite at the end um, so we have a loss coefficient um, so we, we consider the production of televisions um, so I, okay it's a dated one who watches television again but um, think about monitors of uh, or, or, or laptop monitors uh, that we are typically staring at now. Um, so, okay, the, the, the television indicates its source. Um, so we have a loss coefficient, uh, $1.25. So this loss coefficient is determined by uh, the price, what it costs to repair a TV that misses the target. Um, so there is labor cost in there and then also at what time uh, do customers start to complain um, so the color density is a quality and if customers start to complain so the, the, the data is experimental again so the $1.25 is an empirical constant now we have two production plants uh, one in the United States and one in Japan uh, both of them actually do not miss the target. Uh, so the expected color density of the production uh, is exactly the target, uh, which I hear uh, written down again with M, uh, not theta. Um, so, but it turns out that uh, in the United States there is much more variation than in Japan. Again, a typo plant is missing. I will fix this. Um, so you can see that there is a larger expected loss, and that loss is quite considerable per unit. Um, so if this gets multiplied by the number of uh, televisions that are produced, then one management should be concerned uh, by this. Okay, uh, that uh, sums it up, um, except that now let's, it's high time for an exercise. Um, so, um, the exercise consists in two parts. Uh, so, the first part is setting up the quality loss function using the data uh, from that are in the um, story problem. So an item cost $117 and we have a target of 12 um, and uh, whenever it misses, so if you have 15 or if you have 9, then uh, the loss is $117. So there is a loss of $117 
when you have a 15. Uh, now determine the quality loss function. Um, so the quality loss function, uh, the theta is 11.7, and you will determine the quality loss function by the interpolation. Um, so I can probably already say what it is. Uh, it will involve 15 or 9, depending whether you look right or left, but it is a symmetric case here. It will involve the 15, and it will also involve the 170. So that's the quality loss function. Um, so uh, the, 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 the exercise is in two parts. Actually, the 11.7 is not something that you should consider in the quality loss function. Uh, perhaps I should have broken up this exercise in two exercises. The 11.7 and the standard deviation 1 is only information that you should be using in the second part of the exercise. Um, so what's the second part of the exercise? Um, um, suppose that if we change our production, uh, so that will also raise actually the cost of our item. So now it will be, our item will be costing $137 to produce. Um, but if we do that, uh, then actually we have a standard deviation that is uh, less um, by 5%. So our production improves. Now, uh, is it worthwhile? So compute the expected loss. Uh, compute the expected loss for the two productions, uh, one with standard deviation 1 and another with standard deviation 5%. So the first part of this exercise is a modeling question. Just find the loss function, the, the, the loss coefficient. Uh, the second part is already introducing more uh, in terms of management thinking. Um, a what if scenario. What if you could uh, reduce the standard deviation and nothing in life comes for free. There is a cost associated to this. Uh, should we do this or not? Uh, the, the alternative question is then what is the uh, cost what you could afford uh, instead of the twenty dollars. What should have been the cost be? So that could have been the the alternative phrasing or the third part. Um, so the purpose of this exercise is mainly to make you reason uh, in the dollar amount and in the statistical reasoning associated with coupled with uh, the cost benefit analysis. Uh, which will come more to the forefront in the second uh, part of the course. Uh, recall that the topic of the second project will be a cost-benefit analysis. Um, okay, um, what can we do about this now? Um, we have a production with an expected loss. And actually, we want to improve quality, always. Um, so first of all, where should we spend our uh, efforts on? Um, so factor analysis. Um, so we could do better if we had only uh, better machines. If only our people were better trained, uh, that may also translate into paying our people better. Um, but also, it could be that our production time is too hurried, so we, we actually have, we should spend, allow our people to work uh, better, means that they spend more time uh, for it, and also that our machines, they are not, uh, they, they are probably overclocked. Um, now, very good. Uh, these are all uh, issues, uh, and, and if you are an employee, you definitely favor uh, the higher pay uh, and the better trained people, but uh, you have to justify it. Um, so how can you justify it? Well, which factor is most will, will improve quality the most? Um, how will you go about it? making your argument to management. Well, we will do factor analysis. Again, 
uh, we will uh, have to determine now we have to set up another function uh, the loss of quality in function of the three factors better equipment uh, better trained uh, better paid uh, uh, people uh, and, and or more time um, how do we do this in the abstract well we have a function l Actually, we don't know what the L is, and it could be that uh, management will tell you, well, there's no way that you're ever going to figure out how to do this, but hey, you're a mathematician, and you've paid attention in calculus, and you remember Taylor uh, expansion. So, uh, with Taylor expansion, we have now a, a multivariable fu function. So, let's not do the quadratic part here. Uh, we are happy with the linear approximation. So, here it is. Um, well, you say here is a model. Um, so, the model essentially is linear. It says that if I have people who are trained twice as uh, well, whatever that is, they, the quality will improve by twice as much. Um, that is an assumption that you have to keep in mind of linear models. It's directly proportional. Uh, it may not be that way. So your model, but don't tell this to management, your model might not be a correct model. But here we have something that we can work with because linear algebra will help us. Um, it will help us in determining the coefficient. How will you do it? Uh, well, you will do some experiments. Um, Sometimes you will, so for example, in the first factor with the machines, you still have an old machine there. And you, you may even uh, put that old machine in, or uh, even better yet, uh, you can contact the vendor. And can we just for uh, a week or so uh, borrow your equipment, uh, your new fancy machine, and let's see how that works. Um, so we can do this experiment also. We can hire somebody fresh from the university who knows the latest techniques and who will help us let's get an intern for uh, that also corresponds to having more people um, quantity is not really quality but assume that fresh graduates know it all and then of course there is the more time we will work a little bit uh, more carefully this time very well so here is how we can do the uh, interpolation again. So we change the first fact. Um, so once we have the very old machine that we swap in and once the new machine that we borrowed, so the negative one and the plus one, uh, everything else stays the same. So we have the observed quality and we subtract them from each other. So the factors, so the alpha naught, what the alpha naught was, it disappears. It, so we don't really have to worry about this. But we actually now see very clearly, especially if we compare the old machine that we had versus the new machine. And here, think about computers. You have your, uh, I mean, perhaps you are just like me who has a whole array of computers. So you have an old computer against, uh, against a new computer, and you see what is the factor there. Problem solved. I have my quality. The problem is that you can do this once. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, management lets you experiment. But hey, uh, you have to, so that, that, that costed us some, 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 some effort. But you have to do this now eight times for the three factors. So, uh, so eight times. So if this is eight days, uh, that is going to be expensive. Management won't let you. Um, so what if you would do, could do half of the experiment? Or can you do three experiments? And it turns out that you can, because you remember from linear algebra, or if you took 471, you remember that orthogonality was uh, a critical uh, point in getting more accurate results. Uh, if you took a linear algebra course, you may have seen orthogonal matrices. Uh, and that's also what we are going to do now. We are going to design our experiments in a very clever way. Uh, so instead of doing switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off, 
and do this uh, eight times. No, we can get by by four experiments. Um, four and eight, um, it's halfway. So if you're a theoretical computer scientist, uh, we care about the big O there in a theoretical computer science course. But no, we are practical people. If we can cut things by half, this is this is great. So instead of, we, we have already done one experiment already. So we already made one case uh, to, to, to management that will work. So we have to do three more if you like. So uh, the, the point is we have four experiments and we picked our uh, points where we do our observations very carefully. Um, uh, we have values plus or minus where the sum of every column equals zero and the inner product of every column with every other column is zero as well. Uh, so if you have never taken linear algebra, which I hope is not the case, uh, then this sounds magic to you. Uh, but the terminology of the observations here, especially the inner product, should ring a bell. Um, so we have an orthogonal matrix and we do approximation. So each time we have four experiments and we have four values for our loss of quality. Actually, as we will see, there will be differences. The alpha not, not will actually come, come up again. So the alpha not the value there is that if you do not change anything. So what was the, 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 the alpha not constant? The alpha not uh, constant if there is no change in your uh, factors. So that's actually a given uh, first constant. So we can uh, reformulate uh, mathematicians as we all are. Uh, we can formulate our experiment a little bit neater and uh, in linear algebra means this in mat matrix vector notation. So we have a linear system, if you like, um, where we want to determine the alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 as a solution of an over-determined coefficient. So what we have given are the plus ones and the minus ones in our experiment. And we have the observed changes in quality. So the L1 minus alpha naught is actually the change in quality. Um, the fact that it all summed up to zero is also interesting here. If you sum up all the changes in quality, you need to have four times the alpha naught there. The four will also come up here. Uh, the four being the number of experiments. Um, we have actually an orthogonal matrix. Uh, so solving linear systems can be complicated. It's not so if we have an orthogonal matrix. So we multiply our matrix of experiments, the capital A, with its transpose. Uh, columns become rows and rows become columns. Uh, so this is a simple matrix vector multiplication. Um, so we can read off, so we obtain essentially the identity matrix. Notice the factor 4. Uh, you, you, if you forget this factor, you may overestimate uh, by a factor 4. Uh, and don't do this to management, don't overblow it. So be careful with this factor 4 here. But with a matrix vector multiplication, you're going to multiply the transpose of A with your right-hand side. And you can read off the uh, factors for alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. Okay, uh, that, is, that is it then, essentially, for our lecture. Um, one second exercise, which is more of a puzzle. Uh, construct orthogonal matrices. Uh, so we did this in 471 uh, at random with the QR factorization, but now actually we are interested in uh, discrete uh, values. So I, essentially your orthogonal array, if you work with continuous spectrum, that could still be, uh, the QR factorization could be still very good, but we are now in the discrete world. 
uh, with an orthogonal design we want minus one is plus one and the purpose of this exercise is actually that zero is also a very good number to use um, that essentially means what does this mean is that you discard this factor so you have no change in that factor um, so typically a production plant can be extremely complex uh, but zero allows you to focus say on three uh, factors or, or on two if you like so uh, figure out how to construct a nine by four orthogonal array uh, using negative ones zeros and one in every column um, explain your work uh, so i'm curious to see so i so the solution of this exercise um, should be a matrix. And, and by the way, um, perhaps I should have explained this a lot earlier. What is the format in which you should submit exercises? That will be one single Jupyter notebook. Um, so at some point I will announce which exercises will be uh, collected, but your exercises must be submitted in a Jupyter notebook. Um, so, th th therefore, if you are not yet fully familiar with the Jupyter Notebook, that is actually the main exercise for this week. Um, okay, uh, last slide. Um, our library has the paper copy of the book of Taguchi. Um, this is where I took the example for the tailor. Um, in, in, in some run of the course, I was using yens, uh, but they switched to dollar amounts. Um, there is also the handbook of uh, total quality management. And also there, Takuchi quality control, the quality loss, still plays uh, an important role there. So our original work is dated um, fine, and, but it's nothing, what, whatever works, Taylor works. So that's also... Uh, perhaps the main conclusion, another conclusion, uh, all the efforts that we have spent in calculus actually pay off. Um, so thank you for uh, watching till the end. Um, so in our next lecture, we've seen integrals, uh, and they may be daunting, uh, but we will see as computer scientists that we will use Monte Carlo methods to compute very much more complicated integrals than the ones we have seen already. So we are also computer scientists, so we can compute, or rather here in this week, uh, in statistics, we can estimate uh, things very efficiently.